Hi everyone, this is Mr. Lim from SEP Academy. Thank you so much for joining us in this informative session where we learn a little bit more about physics. So we are very honoured to have with us the Head Tutor for Physics for H2 at Zenith Studios. So Sean, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Alright, so <clears throat> basically I've been teaching physics um, actually all the way back in GC actually. Mm. So when I was in GC, I was part of a um, kind of like direct admission mm. uh, DSA class in Hua Chong. Mm. So um, I would say there was a little bit of a uh, difficulty to adjust to mm. the uh, difficulty and the rigour of the Hua Chong syllabus. Mm. Yeah, so very luckily, since Sec 3, Sec 4, I was very interested in physics, so that helped me get a grasp of JC physics mm. very, very quickly. I see. Yeah, so what I did for all my classmates and my friends was that after school, I would actually stay back, mm. I would help them out with a couple of their questions, and I decided, you know what, this is actually something I might want to do for the long term, and then um, after I ended my A-levels, that's essentially what I started doing. Um, as I move into NS and then after NS as well, mm -hmm. all the way into uni. Yeah. I see, I see. Also, I guess you've been teaching physics with uh, a lot of interest, you know, uh, since JC, it's, it's really rare to find <coughs> a teacher so, uh, who understands physics so well, so, so, such that he was able to teach physics even at his JC uh, while he was studying JC, and right now he's carrying it all the way and he's helping students. And to understand physics better. So now, we know that physics is quite an integral yeah. topic like for uh, most of the, some of the university courses. Can you enlighten us which topics, uh, which courses uh, take physics as a prerequisite? Right, so that's a very simple answer. So I'm gonna um, basically give you the acronym STEM. S-T-E-M. So science, technology, engineering, and math. All of these courses basically uh, come require you to at least take H2 Physics or Chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so therefore H2 Physics is actually a very, very integral part of choosing a large proportion of the university courses. Mm. Yeah. That's a very interesting insight, but actually at the back of my mind, I was thinking S-T-E-M, M for medicine. <laughs> so, uh, I think some of our viewers, they're interested in taking medicine for a course for university, so uh, then they submitted a question like, should I take PCME or BCME things like bio and related to medicine for their H2 comb combination? Okay, that's actually a very, very good question. And actually I have a very good answer for that as well. So uh, for most students who want to get into medicine, they think, okay, I should take bio because you know, I'll be dealing with patients and that's a logical choice. Uh, but actually that's not true. The only prerequisite is H2 chemistry. So um, you can actually have a pick whether you want to take H2 physics or you want to take H2 bio. But I would obviously recommend physics because like I said before, you basically um, have physics as a prerequisite for your S, T, E and M uh, courses in university. So that opens up a lot more doors. Mm. So a few students who actually after A-levels, they went to take an internship mm. with uh, a hospital and they decided that maybe you know, medicine isn't what I want to do. And because they took physics, they could very, very easily just go and divert into another course of the interest. For example, maybe science, biological science as well, mm. um, or engineering. Yeah. So it seems like, uh, although bio is a very good choice, it seems like um, the logical choice for taking medicine, but the crux is chemistry is compulsory for submissions and entry into medicine. However, taking H2 physics does open the door to more opportunities. So now, it, another question that I would like to ask is like since a lot of students who, uh, they actually struggle with physics at set 3 and set 4 level and they find, hey, um, I, I don't really understand some of the electricity bits or induction or like uh, I have a problem trying to find my Newton's third law and stuff. Mm. So. Um, can I just take H1 physics instead, instead of going full steam into H2 physics? Okay, so I have some very very bad news for those who have problems with topics like uh, forces, Newton's third law, second law, first law, as well as electricity because these topics are both in H1 and H2 so there's no escape. So the difference between H1 and H2 is actually more in terms of the topics that weren't touched at all actually. Uh, during um, Sec 3, Sec 4. So we're going very in-depth into topics like superposition, you know, the superposition of waves, and uh, into kind of like um, new age physics, like quantum physics. Mm, yeah, we learn a lot about uh, the wave particle duality, very, very interesting stuff. 
Mm. Yeah. See a little bit of Einstein there, <laughs> dual particle yeah. theory. Yeah, okay, okay. So now having understand a little bit better about H1 and H2, so can you tell us the differences like in terms of the content? How much more content is there in H2 physics as compared to H1 physics? Alright, okay, so for H2 physics is essentially almost double that of H1. Yeah. So there's a lot more to study. <laughs> for example, the whole of thermodynamics, which is a huge topic. There's oscillations, waves, superposition, uh, electromagnetic induction, as well as quantum physics. Mm. So it's actually a huge por uh, portion of the syllabus that's not included in H1. Uh, however, don't let that fool you. It's actually not easier at mm. all. Why is yeah. that so? It seems like H1 is having less. Why, why do you say that it's not easier? Yeah, so th that's actually something very, very interesting. So when uh, I was going through the H1 versus H2 papers with the students, mm. I found that the H1 papers were way more in-depth and way harder as compared to the H2 syllabus. Way more in-depth. Correct, so correct. That means they teach less, but they stretch students more. Correct. The understanding that the students need for H1 is, I would say, at least two times more than for H2. So essentially, you're studying basically less topics, but you have to go twice more in-depth, so in the end, it becomes the same. This is something like set 3, set 4, when some students take combined science, they think, hey, um, we're doing less, we're studying less, but essentially, combined science, you're studying about 90% of each chemistry and physics, for example, but you're only studying for one paper, something like that. Yeah, you can see that it's a very good comparison. So, um, I would say the only um, kind of like compromise that you have is basically you take two less papers. Huh? Oh. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, so in my humble opinion, I really do not think that it's worth you going to take H1 physics because a lot of people think, okay, I study less, Thus, I don't need to commit as much, but actually that's not true. Mm. Yeah, H1 uh, physics students, in my opinion, have to study way harder mm. and have to understand the concepts way deeper. Yeah. Seems like uh, it's not an easy way or just to take H1 physics. <laughs> yeah, it's no easy way. <laughs> but let's look at the other end of the spectrum where we have students, very brainy viewers who are interested in H3 physics. So what is our take on that? Like should, let's say if I'm already very interested in physics, should I take H3? Is it very difficult to score? Um, I would say history physics is more into uh, what you study in university. So if, um, based on my own experience, most students that take history basically get somewhat attached to a university where they kind of like partake in um, basically university experiments and projects and learn more about what you're doing in university mm. in that aspect. Yeah, so it's actually very interesting. Does this give me an additional edge if let's say I'm interested to apply for scholarships if I take a H3? Okay, yeah, um, I mean this is the obvious answer. So obviously if you are uh, looking for scholarships, then they would prioritize your academic achievements and H3 looks absolutely amazing on a level cert. Yeah. Well, my question is, well, if it's really amazing on the cert, is it going to be really, really tough as compared to H2? Is there going to be a jump there? Yeah, there's a definite jump because there's not just um, additional content they have to study, but actually projects that you have to partake in. I see. Yeah, so it's additional outside of your normal school time, which so you have to sacrifice some of your CCA time and your full time. I guess for our viewers who are really interested in taking on scholarships, so I guess this is a, a, a point where you have to take note of, you have to invest the time and effort and do really well in one of the H3 subjects and as well as for your interviews and all the best for you. So I guess we, have, we also have some questions from our viewers, so we have submitted uh, to us. So for example, like if I take uh, PCME, Physics, Chem, Math and Econs, would there be more opportunities and university courses to choose rather than like uh, further Math, Math, Chemistry, Econs, etc.? Hmm. Alright, um, well like I said just now, actually physics is actually more of a prerequisite than actually even math for a lot of courses, which is quite interesting. Mm. Yeah, so uh, if you look through the list for let's say NUS, this is a very, very common university that most students want to go to in Singapore. Um, you're just going to take a look through. Actually, a lot of the prerequisites is actually H2 physics. Mm. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting when most of them only require H1 math. No wonder it still boils down to PCME being one of the more popular choices after several decades of being in our education system in Singapore. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, there, there, there must be a reason why it's the number one choice for most students. Yeah, so, I do have uh, other questions. For example, like, mm, 
can I take triple science in JC as well like physics, chem, math and bio? So since because like, I really like that subject combination at set 4. So is it going to be really intense? <laughs> <impressed? laughs> um, from my understanding, I don't think so. You must have one contrasting subject, if I'm not wrong. So most, most people take uh, econs mm. as, as their uh, contrasting subject. So sadly, you can only choose two. Okay, so uh, everyone please think that there's a contrast contrasting subject which we have to choose and there's an additional question which is like what do you think of hybrid combinations for example if I take uh, ec uh, econs and math but, and, and physics so but instead of maybe like uh, I want to take humans so is it going to be very rigorous in terms of the amount of work I have to put in? Um, I would say that really boils down to basically what you want um, Honestly, I can't be a judge as to what you should or should not take Obviously, I came from PCME background, I really enjoyed that route And um, based on my experience with my own friends and my own ex-students who basically took hybrid courses That wasn't really a challenge for them because they did enjoy both their humanities side and their sciences side And they managed to cope very very well yeah. okay. So, it seems like although H2 Physics does have a little bit more topics but and it is actually easier to score. So probably you can share with us like how did your students fare last year for yeah, physics H2? Alright, okay, so basically um, what I can uh, I can give you all basically a brief outline of as to how the cohort did basically. Hmm. So historically for H1 physics, and this might be very very shocking because most people think it's easier, the H1 distinction rate for physics is actually 21%. That's really low. <laughs> yeah, 21 or 22 percent. It's a, it's absolutely horrible. But for H2 physics, that goes all the way up to 42, 43 percent. So actually, what you notice is that if you take H2 physics, you are two times more likely to get an A. Actually, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So I, I guess that's very good food for thought when you are making your subject combinations and choosing between H1 and H2 physics. Since like it's not so daunting to take H2 physics now. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably easier for you to score and with very very good tutors such as Sean, I'm very sure you'll be able to be on your path to secure your A for the A levels. So thank you so much Sean for this time right, and thank you. thank you so much our viewers for joining us and we'll see you next.